Welcome to another week of sailing video highlights from events conducted all around the world. Boats on TV was started 17 years ago in London, and since then, when we commenced the world on water in 2010, we have uploaded thousands of sailing videos. We start with a sensational video from a helicopter of Charles Cordrelier in Edmund de Rothschild passing Cape Horn on a perfect day. The pictures are overwhelming in their clarity, and, in 17 years, we have never seen the like. Congratulations to Team Jatana, Charles, and the Heli videographers. What can we say after that? Only, this is the Sailing World on Water, February 9, 2024. A delayed start and a lighter day, saw the Ilka Masters World Championships 2024 kick off with two races. A 5 to 10 knot southwesterly, settled in just after 3 pm local time, and all fleets on both the Ilka 6 and Ilka 7 courses were able to get their first two races in the bank. Yeah, love the place. Sun shines, it gets pretty hot at times, but always, always a decent breeze. Yeah, um, the Adelaide venue is a lot different from our Samoa Sailing Club. Uh, the open beach and open water, and we're facing a southerly usually when we're sailing down here in the Adelaide. So I've been here for a while. I did the Australian Nationals, and I've joined in the Masters World Cup. And Adelaide so far has been very hot, but also um, just perfect actually. Coming from Samoa, it's been very hot and the wind has been a bit up and down, but it's been really good. Well, I've, yeah, I've been told um, Adelaide is really well known for their wines, the vineyards around the area. Um, haven't got there yet, but um, the World Cup organizers have organized a wine tour for our Lay Day. Um, so far, I've been to a comedy show, so the live comedy scene here is really um, funny, <laughs> very enjoyable. So I got to see a lot of the local talent in the CBD area. So we're not too far, we're about a 15 minute drive from the CBD. We're out here on West Beach, which also has a really nice city center in Glen Alg, which we really enjoy. Got a little Ferris wheel and heaps of nice eateries. Um, really good spot to be. Yeah, I think we're expecting a bit of a mixed bag with light winds to it picking up throughout the week. I'm really hoping just for, um, actually I'm hoping for anything really good. I'm just trying to get my World Cup experience up there, so hoping for a nice campaign, um, good starts, and enjoying it here with the Masters. So being part of the Masters World Cup, I feel like I'm all-knowing, even though I'm an apprentice. So I'm really glad for the opportunity to be here with um, some really top, top-class sailors up in their prime, so yeah. Uh, yeah I've been to, we did a little bit of training in Adelaide last year. 
did the Aussie Nationals and did the Senior Worlds here. So I've been here for a little while now, um, probably longer than anyone else here at this regatta. And uh, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to uh, doing anything as a tourist. Um, there's some great plunge pools just down the road from where I'm staying in Glenelg. Great for recovery. Um, great days at the beach. You know, you've got a massive, co beautiful coastline, um, which I'd recommend. You know, and yeah, just getting in the water, enjoying the weather. Today should be interesting. Should be nice and shifty. And uh, and then I think the next five or six days could be an absolute hike off. So that's what I'm expecting. So day one was definitely a day for patience. The sea breeze, which did eventually come, didn't come when the sailors wanted it, but we had two fantastic races. Now you can't win the championships on the first day, but you can certainly lose it. And it was very tricky racing with the wind trying to turn to the left, but often more pressure on the offshore side of the course. We're gonna have lots more racing to come, but you don't wanna have a big score on your first day. However, looking later in the week, it looks like we may be looking at stronger sea breezes and more consistent results. The Royal Ocean Racing Club is all set for the 15th edition of the ORC Caribbean 600, organized in association with the Antigua Yacht Club. Close to 65 teams are expected to be competing, with 500 sailors from 26 different countries, racing in a huge diversity of boats. Racing action starts with inshore courses for the ORC Nelson's Cup Series on the 13th of February. Racing got underway close to scheduled start time and all fleets completed two races, however with the forecast set to build throughout the day, by the end of the second race the breeze was consistently hitting more than 20 knots. Day 2 of the Ilka World Masters Championship saw Ilka 7 Master Sailor, and former Olympic Finn Sailor, Brendan Casey comment that the vibe at this regatta was really enjoyable, and brought people together for great sailing, as well as some fantastic off-water culture. Casey who is leading the Ilka 7 Masters fleet after day two, with two race wins on day two, said Masters regattas were what sailing was all about. I sail in Ilka 6, I'm just in the Masters, I didn't quite make the Grand Masters, um, which means I'm the fourth start, very hard. Um, what's brought me to the World Championship? It was in Adelaide. Why wouldn't you? Like, it's such a good opportunity to do, um, meet some great people, all of, like you look around at all the countries and everyone's so friendly and it's lovely. Uh, so I'm from Port Lincoln, which is, if you go by road, it's about 640 k's. There's three people that have come across, Andy Dyer, Mike Stockdale and myself. Um, they're both sailing sevens. I'm sailing a six. Oh look, it is a well-oiled machine. These guys have got it nailed. You know, after three regattas, um, they know exactly how to run this. It is running so smoothly. The volunteers are amazing. Um, the vibe is so nice, it's so welcoming. Some sunshine today would be nice, but other than that, that's all. And a bit less wind for me because I'm a bit small. <laughs> Got a bit more time up my sleeve with work being a bit more flexible. So I'm just gonna try and do masters regattas if I can. I don't know about a world, so it'd be pretty nice to go somewhere. Um, it's my first Masters World Championships and I've done a lot of elite, obviously elite sailing, but uh, that's probably, I think it was 18 years ago since my last laser event, but I'm feeling really energised by the, the whole sailing, but I can understand now from a junior sailor or why they, everyone keeps coming back. Like you're meeting up with friends you haven't seen for a long time, you're sharing your experiences and you're around a common group of people that have a passion for sailing and you know it's a real passion for life. Yeah, the racing's good. Um, the racing and the, the combined is great. The racing and the banter is, is good. The ra everyone wants to do well and everyone um, you know sails the boats to the best of their abilities and keeps the racing quite tight. Um, I'm in the masters division. We combine with the apprentices, so that's a, it's a you know good sizable fleet 
to have um, where you have to make good decisions to, to get to the front of the fleet. Look, Adelaide and, and sailing off here in you know, these waters is one of my favourite places to sail in Australia. So, um, fond memories of doing this. Um, great uh, sea conditions, waves, wind, um, the volunteers and everyone involved in organising not just the Masters event but the series of events we've had has, has been first class. Um, and it's really nice to hear positive feedback from everyone around the world about Adelaide. Um, whether they've visited wineries or you know they've gone into the city, the cricket, whatever's been on, they've tried it out. Rooftop bars, you name it, they've experienced it. So it's um, it's nice. Well, if day one was a day for patience, day two is a day for pasta. Adelaide certainly delivered. Full on conditions didn't quite arrive for start time but it certainly came in when it did. There's going to be some sore legs, there's going to be some sore backs. What am I saying? There's just going to be some sore bodies tonight. But that's why we love Ilka Sailing. One more day of racing tomorrow, then that well-deserved rest day. And I'm not quite sure how restful it is if you go on a drinking tour. The inaugural Dubai Duty Free SB20 Sailing Asia Pacific Championships kicked off this week at the Dubai Offshore Sailing Club. Over two days, 38 boats, including seven youth teams, will engage in exhilarating races off Jumeirah Beach. The opening day witnessed three races. Kids Inc. Skippered. By Charlotte Borgesi had two bullets in race one and two, while race three saw Team Excellent take the win, helmed by John Pollard. Welcome to the Dubai Duty Free SB20 Asia Pacific Championships 2024. This is the middle of three events happening here at Dubai Offshore Sailing Club. This weekend we've got 38 teams and three days of racing and the wind, as you can see, is in. We've got about 20 knots today and it's building over the weekend. Now sailing here on the water we've got six youth teams competing and three of them are sponsored by Dubai Duty Free and before they went out on the water earlier I caught up with Oscar who is the skipper of Dubai Duty Free Youth Team 2. Yeah, Dubai Duty Free has been great. We've, uh, they fully support us right from the start. The boats were retrofitted out again, really cleaned up, ready to go. Uh, on top of that, we've, they've had a few training days they've pushed for and uh, helped support here at the club. So we've been out in the water five or six times. Uh, never in the wind that we've got forecast, but yeah, we're really looking forward to it and excited to do it. And the regatta kicked off with a bang. It was full on out on the water. A steady breeze of 18 to 22 knots of wind, which saw the boats flying downwind. Upwind, the waves were in to battle through, and there were some pretty exciting times at the mark roundings. The race management did a great job to get three races away. There were a couple of breakages, but overall clean and exciting racing. The first two races were led by Kids Inc. with Charlotte Bergese at the helm and their red spinnaker leading the way downwind. An impressive kickstart to their scorecard for the regatta, and with professional sailors on board, including Olympic gold medalist Pippa Wilson, they all looked very comfortable in the big wind and waves. Yeah, definitely. We're just here to do our best and to, you know, have keep fun. practicing, have fun, <laughs> learn a few, things, learn a few yeah. things, keep in the flow. So, yeah. Oh, there's some great sailors out there. Um, I think, well, me personally, I was more focused on what we were doing. Uh, we just wanted to go out there and do the best we can. Obviously, we were watching the other boats in terms of tactically, uh, but not too much for other um, particular sailors. Translated 9, the Italian 65-foot swan, formerly known as ADC Accutrac, passed Cape Horn at 10.29 UTC on February 6. With 15 knots winds from the north, gusting 20 and 2 metre seas, they sailed just half a mile from the coast of Cape Horn, giving them a perfect view of the iconic rock. Not alone in the Southern Ocean, finally. Here we have Andrea Mura from Vento di Sardegna. Eat pasta, sail faster. Yay!
Hello everyone, welcome to day 16 from Translated 9. Um, today it was a, was a specially cold day, I think. My hands are burning and freezing at the same time, so it's not that good. <laughs> We're eating some Kit Kat to try to make us warm. Which makes everything better. Mm. That's always good. Done some cooking, done some eating, which is even more important. And time to get some sleep. While the other guys are on watch, obviously the sun's come out. So obviously, and by the way, it's always like this. We finish our watch, and then the sun comes out, the rain stops, everything is beautiful. But that's life, baby. We do it for them. Can you pass me just uh, in the oven? There yeah. is the. There is the, the piada. Piada? Yes. Grap. Grap. Piada's bad. Check, check better. Check better. <laughs> okay, hold on. Whoa, you can flip. Uh, <laughs> wow. What is this? Ta da! Oh, oh, no, 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 Nice chocolate cake. Oh. Yeah, happy birthday. Oh. We need more birthdays, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in two days, it will be mine. Uh, mine in three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Dubai Offshore Sailing Club witnessed the grand finale of the Dubai Duty Free SB20 Sailing Asia Pacific Championships on February 4, 2024. Over three days, the event showcased a thrilling blend of challenging camaraderie among the 38 participating boats. Emerging as the overall champions on the third and final day were Team Excellent from the United Kingdom, skillfully helmed by John Pollard, securing their triumph. Desert Eagle 2 and Kids Inc. closely followed in second and third place. It's the final day here of the Dubai Duty Free SB20 Asia Pacific Championships, and what a day we have for it! It's between the top five boats. Any of the top five boats can win this regatta, but there's only one point in it between first and second place. We've got about 16 to 18 knots, blue sky, sunshine, it's perfect sailing conditions to round off this regatta. Fighting remained tight at the top, but the overnight leaders never gave away the lead. Third place goes to Kids Inc, second place to Desert Eagle, and the overall winner of the Dubai Duty Free Asia Pacific Championships is excellent, skippered by John Pollard. What a day, what a last race. Um, first race we won out of the blocks, perfect sailing weather, absolutely beautiful. Uh, shifts, good sailing, what more could you want coming to Dubai? Yeah, the level is super high now at the moment. Um, we have a lot of professional teams in, a lot of really, really good sailors. And we can also see our own DOS fleet really improving and the level has just increased dramatically over the last couple of weeks and months with all our hard efforts put in. No, the event was fantastic and I'm really, really proud of all the sailors. The case of Fast and Furious, <laughs> that's the subtitle of this event. And it was great that they took part and worked hard for three days. So, and it's a great, great preparation for the Worlds. And uh, let's see what happens in two weeks.
In second in the Akia Ultim Challenge Brest, Amel Leclerc has 2,300 miles from his fourth passage of Cape Horn, his first on a multi-hole. He should be able to maintain good averages, close to 800 miles per 24 hours, which would allow him to leave the Pacific Ocean for the South Atlantic next Sunday morning. 400 miles behind him, Thomas Coville, should pass Cape Horn again, this time, during the night from Sunday to Monday. On est mercredi 7 février et ça fait euh, un mois qu'on est parti de Brest sur l'Arkia Ultimate Challenge. Et là on est euh, au milieu du Pacifique Sud, on va pas très loin du point de Nemo. Et euh, bah, ça avance, euh, on est en... dans le train d'une dépression là, depuis trois jours et bah, c'est rythmé. Ça avance vite, vous voyez, euh, ça fume dehors, on pas trop mal à la tête à l'extérieur. Et dans le bateau, euh, bah, ça va, ça, ça remue aussi. Il tes... faut se tenir, de temps en temps il y a des petits plantés, euh, donc euh, faut pas, faut bien avoir la main sur... Euh, pour pas tomber en avant, en ce moment. Et, euh, et voilà, mais il fait beau, c'est cool, on est toujours en avant du front. Et euh, on va essayer de conserver cette position de météo euh, quasiment jusqu'au cap ce serait super. Euh, D'ici euh, un peu moins de 4 jours maintenant, 3 jours euh, pour y arriver. Si tout va bien. Et euh, ben voilà, on a appris que Charles était passé euh, au cap mythique. Voilà, ça va être euh, notre tour euh, dans quelques jours, on espère. Ça fera du bien de sortir de ces mers du Sud qui n'ont pas été faciles, notamment le Zéro Indien. Et, euh, et puis on va attaquer après euh, la grande remontée de l'Atlantique. Voilà. Bon, ce qui est sympa, c'est que les journées sont longues en termes de soleil, enfin de, de jour. Les nuits sont courtes. Donc on a pas mal de luminosité pour, euh, pour régler les voiles, régler le bateau et euh, gérer la vie à bord. Alors, il ne fait, fait pas trop froid, mais, euh, mais normalement on va se rapprocher du Cap Horn, on va être euh, plutôt vers 50-55 euh, sud et là ça va, ça va se refroidir un peu. Voilà, allez bye bye Bonne journée à tous